where does the where does the where does the poetry fit into this? Kia ora koto. Hello all and welcome to the Joe Blogs Poetry Podcast, a short and light exploration of the poetry found in the pockets of people I've met. I personally struggle to read poetry, but love to hear people reading out their own work. Join me as we delve into the wacky world of words. This week we get to hang out with Justin. I first met Justin at the birthday party of a mutual friend in Cape Palliser. And straight away I was struck by his self-effacing intelligence. I really went round the houses with that one, but I, f- <laughs> I, feel like, I, feel, I feel like there is something really undervalued and yet uh, just so potently important about poetic articulation or expression. His distinctive laughter that bubbles up so readily. Oh, beg your pardon. <laughs> <laughs> His wisdom. There's a thread of something which is being made as you're pulling it out of a out of a soup. Um, it's like it's forming as you're pulling, but there's a but you're pulling for a reason and you're pulling from something. And his pilgrimage through suffering towards. A new life. Farewell, open sky. A roof over my roof. Home of my children and their yearning to arrive through us, through you, my gentle love. Let's get stuck in. So, um, what's your name and where are you from? Justin Connor. And I'm from this place, from Wellington. Um, and if I say the word poetry, what does it evoke in you? What do you, what do you get from that? It counterpoints with science for some reason. And that there's po- poetic meaning and, and scientific meaning. Um, and it feels like po- poetic meaning is somehow a way of bringing together words that evoke something new, or that brings that actually creates something new. It, it creates a new space for for uh, uh, me or us to live in. The scientific one gives you something very practical, and the poetic one gives you something very um, uh, livable. <laughs> Or meaningful um, sort of projection. It's a bit like dream, dream logic, like we were talking about earlier. It's kind of like random neuronic firing, <laughs> opening up new <laughs> creative possibilities. <laughs> um, <laughs> yes, except it's got this. Um, it's more magic than that. It, it's a different paradigm from natural selection. A random, a, a billion random occurrences, and out of which sticks something that works a bit better in the environment. I, I mean, that's that's an interesting frame on it. But I, I, I think, that, yeah, for me, poetry is in a, is a different frame because it's not a billion randomly stuck together words that that just one just so happens to sound a bit nicer in our in in the context that you're in. So I don't think it works like that. I feel like there's more intentionality in it. Um, there's something. There's a thread of something which is being made as you're pulling it out of a out of a soup. Um, it's like it's forming as you're pulling, but there's a but you're pulling for a reason and you're pulling from something. Little white fairy. <laughs> it entered on reframed advice, 
in a letter from my seer, staring me to recognise what shadows saw so clear. I leapt alive from bed today and bounded through my door, a summer's sun washed bright away, the body knew before. A small white fairy sank last night, in gales so wild and fraught. A girl I loved sailed so damn far to thwart my being caught. My tethered hope was strong and straight, great rescue under way, but forces thrashed to loosen fate beyond my power to stay. And from our bridge we watched resigned, blown far too fast from helping. As down she drew inside the squall, her little hull crew unseen at all, and us left but with only gall, powerless, bleak, but standing tall, sad, but clear we'd done our all, she's lost to life's own scuttling. And later, on a hill that watched, his battle strained and lost, she stands alone above the ground, a spirit, free and soft. In moon-grey silence, more pork sings. A heart beats empty still. A tap drip drain of all the things, relentless, slow, but surely brings a mind to see beyond its flings how dreams foreshadow will. Brown towel. Brown towel hangs on a wire. Not hopeless, because I know I'm known about. A rescue will come. No concern for atrophying, all bunched up, turning to stone, cracking in a hot summer wind, bleached and brittle to join the earth again. No, I'll be collected, folded and stored, ready for use. That death is not for me. My death will be different, but not alone. There is nothing but bodies. <laughs> Suddenly, silently, hooked moans and clasped, claimed breaths. Sharp souls sensing mastery from below close ranks to wittering, frightened minds and transcend steely heights to grounded, rousing rites. Transfusion of touch weaves one warmed blood. Pressed Precious, oiled organs are new tongues, whispering wishes and stars and fountains of gushing, flowing, knowing, in a sighing sweetness of collapsed longing. And there is nothing but bodies. In the basement of myself is the ground of my being, the foundations, the ancient stonework, sandy and shaped, old messages in dry carved cuts, hewn by hands, perhaps of lives gone, or lives passed by, doesn't matter, because it's me. It's like when they were pouring the foundations, all the concrete went in, the grey concrete. 
but in there also were the original stones of that place, the original carved foundations, the original rock forms, and on the surface, a bunker for my heart and a family home, a skyscraper for my ego's view, a shelter, a fierce house of war, a think tank, and a pond. And everyone knows as they walk on by, or tip their hats, or drop and worship, or rail against my machine and throw stones, everyone knows in their song hearts the sound of those carvings, the taste of that warm, sandy stability. And inside and outside, an unskilled archaeologist wishing to know himself dances and digs. Wairarapa salute after a period of time living there in the summer. <laughs> Farewell, green gold ancients, leaning to drench in silent remaining rays, a sun that's taught me of my own gentle sun. Farewell, peaceful valley of sweet horses, sweet folk, and waving, glowing grasses. Farewell, thumb-stroked milky jam, a roof over my torments and awakenings to joy of my alone making. Farewell, rubber-throcked tarmac, lichen of my life, pathways of heart-strengthening, heart-racing, heart-warming discovery. Farewell, open sky, a roof over my roof, home of my children and their yearning to arrive through us, through you, my gentle love. Farewell, bee and bird, my flying companions, ducks of my paradise, watching and reading, death whispering to the living to live and not wait. Farewell, family dear, furnace, field and flame, for when mine own was lost in me. And farewell, teal rivers, who baptised me, asking nothing but patience. Wow, what an episode stuffed full of poetic meaning, of insights and powerful imagery. I absolutely love Justin's poetry and I'm so glad I coaxed him to share. And certainly it doesn't hurt that he's got such a deep, soothing voice to aid the delivery of his imaginative meanderings. It almost feels like some of his word combinations could be unique Justinisms. I've never heard and would never think to combine the words rubber throcked tarmac, for example, but I love the clunkiness of it, guttural and uncomfortable, and evocative of the well-worn country roads. Thank you again, Justin, and I'd love to close off this episode with a short poem of my own. City Lights by Joe Bloggs I feel the roaring of it. Throbbing gigawatt bass cosigns itself in my stomach, pulling my heartbeats from their cage and throwing them to the mercy, flung like doves from a steeple. I feel the hope and despair of it, the endless musky avenues, exhilarating open mouths trammeled by luck and statistics, charting every white-tipped crest. It fills me until I forget to breathe, vibrating at terminal frequency in this city of comets and lightning, a glut of hunger, 
drenched in thirst. I feel the scream building in pitch all through my body until my mind combusts in it, spontaneously from tinder to torch, synchronised with the sea of them, my ears ringed with white silence. I flee to the woods and meet the patient flickers that warble through our liquid honey tombs with a spaciousness that also beguiles. Huge thanks to Adrian Soya, good friend of mine who's just launched his album Ave Alba. The track A La Mort is the soundtrack for the podcast and Clouds is the soundtrack for this episode. If you like this episode and want to hear it again with some extra content, there's a longer extended edition with Justin available at my podcast channel.